first ever Airbus Summit, which took place at the Airbus Group Leadership University in Toulouse, brought together industry leaders and press from around the world to present, talk and discuss the industry's path towards a greener and more sustainable future. This is a very exciting uh, summit where uh, a lot of stakeholders meet and interact on uh, all the different challenges that we have. And of course being at Airbus, uh, looking at new aircrafts and the existing fleet is of course very important as well to look at the future fleet. And that's what we are looking most at right now, is how can we uh, support Airbus to develop aircrafts with even lower emission than the aircrafts we get right now, the 320 Neos, the 350s and the 321 long ranges, which are impressive aircrafts showing substantial emission reductions, uh, but we need to go further. It's an enormous challenge and every challenge starts with a goal. So um, it was important for us um, to set our ambition, um, to have the decision that we want to become net zero by 2050, but even more important so um, that we reduce our net CO2 emissions by already 50% in 2030. So that's kind of the framework. And from there you work down because there's not this one silver bullet. On the path to a net neutral aviation industry there is already today with existing aircraft and infrastructure much that can be done, especially when looking at new fuel options. Talk about sustainable aviation fuel, we would like to look at it uh, more specifically into different waves or different types of bio raw materials uh, that of course must be sustainable according to the renewable energy directive in the EU system uh, where we can use waste from agriculture or from forestry or, uh, or from different type of industry processes is of course uh, maybe a little bit more of a short-term solution but nevertheless it's a good solution that must be used and can be used uh, to a certain degree. And then of course we come into more and more advanced production methods where uh, a large amount of uh, renewable energy and of course carbon is, is raw materials uh, with power to liquid. So I think we need to see it as different steps on the development. And the pace at which innovation has gone into aviation, mainly on, uh, on um, fuel burn and carbon emission, has been, has been impressive. So we need to continue the pace, not to stop it. Um, another very important uh, way of reducing carbon emissions very quickly is the acceleration on SAF. Because we have planes today which are certified for 50% of SAF dropping today. All planes we are delivering and actually the, the use rate in the world is significantly below 1%. So we could do much better, much faster, uh, and not uh, stopping aviation around the world, which contributes a lot to uh, prosperity and the prosperity we will need for investment in all sectors to decarbonize uh, human activities. The summit left no doubt that there already today are many solutions to reduce the problem of carbon emissions, which airlines and plane manufacturers can pursue, but also from regulators, steps must be taken. We've been hearing a bit about the, the technical evolution and the potential for a much more efficient air traffic management system as well. Um, you fly often in, in London and in Europe's largest cities. Maybe, Johan, you could touch on that from an EasyJet perspective. Do you see significant potential to come from air traffic management? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I must say, I think it's, uh, I struggle almost to find a word on there. I think it's appalling. I think it's absolutely appalling that we haven't seen progress in this area. This has been such a, you know, a big topic for so many years. You know, just on our network, we, we did the calculation that if we were just had a reformation of the airspace tra traffic management, we would save instantly about 15% okay. less fuel. Okay. And, and, and that is massive. The aviation industry is a global industry like few others and the need to find global solutions and a common ground to tackle future challenges seems a necessity for airlines and plane manufacturers alike. We have to have a, a worldwide approach. which is really important is to be able to save, to reduce CO2 uh, emission each time you are you can do it and what you, you expect when you are a pilot is you are working in the same way in Madrid in Stockholm yeah. or in Paris or the goal. Aviation is a global market um, a solution will work and will be adopted only if they are global solutions so we need global standards 
uh, we need a global playing field, level playing field. Um, if we don't have it, um, the planes that would be the one for China, the ones for Europe, the ones for US will be different and we won't be able to put the level of investment for a, a plane for a smaller part of the world. Looking further into the future, the multi-solution approach with a wide range of solutions from pure electric, fuel cells and hydrogen looks promising and airlines are eager to take the first steps. We like to be pioneers, we like to move uh, things forward uh, and of course uh, our engagement in this uh, for over two and a half years soon, the hydrogen, uh, of course uh, puts us in a position that says that we want to be in the forefront. Uh, it all comes down to commercial terms uh, of the aircraft, what kind of, uh, what kind of range it has, what kind of, uh, uh, where can we use it, uh, of course, and whether or not we can source energy to aircraft. But we would love to be among the first. And uh, I think we need to see where we can get hydrogen, uh, if it's hydrogen, uh, or fuel cells uh, recharged. And if that's not in our home market, then of course we have to wait a little bit but we will work really hard to make sure that we are we are in a market where we can be among the firsts